and the bone mimicking each other. It's going to be a perfect relationship. No margin is located on any tooth anywhere when we are finished with biologic shaping, which, again, we're hours away. So we're doing this case together, and all my cases must have cores where needed and provisionals. I have to have provisionals. I can't treat an old crown. It's impossible. That's my opinion. So I took my finger and I felt it, and there's a very large exostosis, huge. And I can tell you, you must be very slow and very meticulous when you're laying your flat back. And you know, you would probably, you we're gonna talk about it, but you wanna come all the way up here in the middle of the tuberosity. You don't wanna be out here. That's where the bone is. And then you would work your way around. We know you're gonna be doing a full thickness flap, going in and out, around and in and out, removing any granulation tissue or the, in, in the sulcular area. But you're going to want to go right to the bone, as we said, and then what are we going to do? We're going to take our elevator out, and we're slowly going to start to reflect the tissue back very slowly because we have to move it off the bone. This is very irregular bone. Look how thick it is here. Look how thick it is there. And we want to reflect our flap back so that we can treat all the bone and not traumatize the flap. So I'm going to push the flap back so I can treat the bone, but I still want to keep the periosteum maybe even 10 millimeters higher so I can suture to it. But so look at the bone. It's quite irregular. So here's the bone before. And notice we have shoulders. If my restorative dentist had placed a core out here, I would have been fine with that. But because they're so close to the, the furcation, I'm going to tend to want to remove these shoulders. And again, when we talk about biologic shaping, it's going to be much more than just whittling on a tooth. And you're going to see why. But so we've done our massive, massive osseous surgery. And our flap is sleeping. It's, you don't even see it. We did our osseous. We did our tooth, you know, removing all irregularities. And we created a parabolic architecture. We also removed these shoulders. And as long as the dentist places a chamfer margin when I'm finished, it won't matter. We will have no pulpal involvement. We'll have nothing. Notice how all the tissue is gone from the distal. We'll replace it. It's in the flap right now. But remember that big area of bone? It's all gone. See how far the bone came out here? It's gone. See, now it comes back and follows the proper contours. Again, we're getting ahead of ourselves, but if you can imagine now what everything looks like when we get to doing osseous, it's going to be much more meaningful to you because you've already seen it. I like to use a diamond round burr, six, a number six diamond round burr. If you've been doing osseous surgery for 10, 15, or 20 years, you could use a carbide burr, but I can tell you, when you first start out, a carbide burr is way too aggressive, and you can really destroy the bone with it. So my recommendation is to use diamond burrs. Uh, again, a lot of you all that probably are looking at this have used carbide burrs for years, and I have no problem, but they can really ditch the bone. And if you have a large marrow space and you hit it, you can take a carbide burn right through, right through the hole that's the marrow space and hit the root. So that's what I use. You know, I would recommend everyone use it. Though we're stepping ahead, it's giving you a chance to see. So there's our huge exostosis. And you know what that circle represents? That's the coal. The area that is nothing more than epithelium, as you can see here and you can see here. That's a concavity. You cannot keep that. It's impossible. Because when you make your incisions going as far as you can, you're only going to be able to keep the here to here from, you know, this far from the lingual to the buckle and this far from the buckle to the lingual, which is fine. You don't have to worry. You'll get as close to primary closure as you could get. And that coal the reason why we don't want to keep it is because it's all epithelium and it's very weak. You don't want to carry weak tissue in your flap, so it's good that it's gone. And so we suture it back. 
And I want you to see this so when you look at your own surgeries, that's as far as you could go. That's as far as you could go. Taking your flap and closing it because the coal was present. Who cares? You have dense.